Rodner here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at dyno testing that I did on an 8.1 liter Gen 7 big block Chevy. So we tested a number of different things. One was the new RHP Elgin Stage 1 camshaft. You know, a low buck alternative, the stuff that might already be out there. And then I also tested a comparison between the EFI intake manifold and the Dart carbureted dual plane manifold. Which one of those makes more power? Let's okay, we got to take a look at our 8.1 and the testing that we did on the new RHP Elgin Stage 1 camshaft and also the Dart dual plane intake manifold. But before we can do that, we need to do what we always do is reestablish a baseline. So if you take a look at the last video, we ran our 8.1 that we got from Amos Garcia and we ran it first in stock trim. So we ran it with a set of two inch long tube headers. Otherwise, it was stock, no accessories, the way that we run it on the engine dyno. We ran it with the Holley HP management system so we could optimize the tune because that's very important. Obviously, the factory tune is very, very mild. But run in this manner on the engine dyno, it made 422 horsepower and 547 foot-pounds of torque. You can see that this is the lowest numbers, of the lowest part of this graph. Then we put the ZZ502 camshaft in it, the big block Chevy cam, so we had to change the firing order, but all that's very easy on the Holly. And that picked up like 40, 45 horsepower. So we were up at 465 horsepower and 582 foot-pounds of torque. We then installed the ported factory intake manifold. So they had porting and welding and a different entry going in, a much larger entry, and it flowed a lot more. This one was done by Amos, so shout out to Amos for that. We picked up about another 20 horsepower, 482 horsepower and 497 foot-pounds of torque. So then we took the motor after running that test, set it in the storage area, came back and put it back up on the dyno. And this time when we re-ran it with no other, well, I can't say no other changes, but we wanted to reestablish our baseline. We thought it would make the same power, but instead it made 503 horsepower and 621 foot-pounds of torque. And here are the changes that we made to it. And this is why it's very important to reestablish a baseline, especially if you can't have all of the same things on it. So when we re-ran this motor, it still had was an 8.1 with the stock heads and all that, all the, all the stock short block, actually stock long block. It did have the same valve springs that we ran last time. It had the ZZ502 cam. It had the ported intake manifold from Amos. But the two things or the three things that we did change on this is when we ran it previously, when it made 482, we had a smaller 90 millimeter throttle body on it. And this time, because the opening in this ported manifold is designed to accept a 102 millimeter throttle body, I installed a 102 millimeter throttle body. The other thing that I did is before we ran this with a set of 80 pound injectors and I didn't have those. So I installed a set of Dodge Hemi injectors, which have a projected like pintle tip on them. I don't think that that had any effect. Both combinations were run at the same air fuel, 12.8 to one, same timing, like 29 to 30 degrees, wherever it made, you know, best power at. But the one change I'm sure that did have a big effect on this power curve, it's probably responsible for most of this, is that we changed the headers. When we ran the motor previously, we ran it with a set of two inch Chevelle chassis style headers um, and, and collector extensions after the exhaust. This time we ran it with the West Tech dyno headers, which have a bigger primary tube, two and a quarter inch. Um, different length runners because they're they're kind of like you know sprint car headers just for making it easy to run on the dyno and then a different collector style and diameter and everything so the headers are definitely different and and this I think the combination of these three things had a fairly sizable effect on the power curve what we did was we reestablished our baseline with our ZZ502 camshaft which we know was about 45 horsepower or so better than stock but this was our new established baseline, so now we could test the dark intake manifold and the RHP Elgin Stage 1 camshaft. So let's find out what happened. Yeah, got the deadlift going. Yeah. Carbureted. Okay guys, we've got the Dart manifold on. We've got an Edelbrock VRS carburetor. It's an 850, so it's more than big enough for what we're doing. Check it out. 
So we're gonna make some pulls with a carbureted combination to see how it compares to the like factory and the ported EFI that I got from Amos. So let's fire this thing up and find out what happens. Okay, now we, now we can actually get into our testing. So we've got our 8.1 liter with the ported and enlarged intake manifold. We have our ZZ502 camshaft, and we have a valve spring upgrade for this thing that allowed us to run the ZZ502 camshaft in it and run with the long tube headers and the fast manifold, 503 horsepower and 621 foot-pounds of torque. So let's see what happened when we replace the EFI intake manifold, this modified version, and we can kind of get an idea of where that would be. Because remember, this manifold is about 20 better than the stock EFI manifold. Here's what happened when we put the carbureted intake manifold on. This is a DART dual plane intake manifold, as you can see here. I'll show you some photos of it. We also ran an Edelbrock 850 VRS carburetor on there. So for this power level, 400 and, you know, 500 sub or 500 horsepower, let's say, an 850 VRS carburetor is more than enough. <laughs> In fact, it'll support uh, multiple hundreds more horsepower with that size carburetor. That's a very, very good carburetor. Again, we dialed in the air fuel. This thing was actually spot on when we pulled it from the cabinet looking at about 12.5, 12.6 air fuel. What we did was rather than put a distributor in here, which you can do, we just used the, continued to use the Holly HP management system to provide the timing curve. The only thing that we had to do, in fact, we ran this thing with a half inch open spacer between the carburetor and the intake manifold so that we could use that basically as a map signal so that we can continue to get a map signal so that we could put the timing curve in there and at wide open throttle we just basically had the same timing curve that we had when we ran the thing when it was fuel injected so the carburetor supplied the fuel the fuel injection supplied the timing curve and all of this worked out good you can see that the equipped with the carbureted manifold this thing made 466 horsepower torque was also way down 562 foot pounds of torque and if you remember, the this ported manifold was about 20 better than the stock one. So this would put the DART manifold even below a factory intake manifold in terms of power. Now there's not a lot of offerings out there for carbureted manifolds for the for this 8.1. Um, it would be nice to have some sort of tunnel ram or those kinds of things, which which would be cool. But if if you're looking to upgrade your EFI, you know, 8.1, and you're thinking about putting this carbureted manifold on there. It doesn't look like it's even the equal of the factory intake manifolds. I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping that we would see, you know, the, the shape of the curve is actually very, very similar to the EFI curve. But I was hoping that we would see like a difference of curve. Now, we didn't rev it all the way out to 5,500 or 6,000. It may be that they cross over out there. And so maybe with more camshaft and even bigger camshaft than the ZZ502, maybe you would see some gains. But, uh, you know, it, it just didn't perform as well as we were hoping. But that's what happens when you put a dual plane dart intake manifold on an 8.1. Yeah, got the deadlift going. Yeah, we're all full race now. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it's a mess. We already had valve springs on this because we'd run the bigger camshaft in it. Hey, it just makes life easier. We'll just pull these up and get them out of the way. So we'll just pull the water pump off, the dampener, front cover, and then we can swap the cam. Okay, got the front cover off. Now time for the time of year. Get the marks lined up. Make sure it has a little bit of throttle because it's going to idle at 1500 or whatever. Okay, we're there. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Okay, so it's going to like pull 5500. Okay, now let's take a look at. 
at the test that we ran on the new RHP Elgin Stage 1 camshaft. This again was our baseline run with the EFI intake manifold, the modified ported version from Amos. We had our 8.1 liter, we had our ZZ502 camshaft in there, and we had our Holly management system with our long tube headers and stuff, made 502 or 3 horsepower, yeah, 5025, and 621 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we installed the RHP camshaft. And I'm going to go ahead and put the specs up here on both camshafts. As you can see, the, the ZZ502, very popular. It's a big block Chevy cam, although it does require you changing the, the firing order since it's a Gen 6 big block, and that is a different firing order than the Gen 7 8.1. But it's a very popular upgrade, and it makes good power. It is a bigger camshaft than this Stage 1 camshaft. And if you remember, the ZZ502 is about 40, 45 horsepower better than stock. So we are actually very, very happy with this new camshaft. Um, again, we'll go ahead and put the specs up there. You can see it's, it's a good bit smaller, let's say, than the ZZ502, but still managed to produce 488 horsepower. And peak torque checked in at 610 foot-pounds of torque. So it made close to the same peak torque, let's say it was within, I think, 10 of the ZZ502. Didn't make as much power out out at the top because it's down, you know, 10 or so degrees of duration and that was kind of expected. What I did like though is down below 3500 RPM, the small, the slightly smaller stage one cam made more power down low and had we run this thing down at 2000 RPM or so, we'd see an even bigger spread down there. So down there it would work uh, even better and I think that's probably an area where a lot of guys for since you have it since they would have these in trucks and things um they would be using that rpm range down there so it would be very effective all the way up you know past the torque curve and at 4500 rpm is really where the bigger the zz502 camshaft would start showing its you know its its additional power gain so uh, that's a good camshaft. So we're looking at like if you remember the factory camshaft was about 45 or 40 to 45 less than a ZZ502 camshaft. That would put this camshaft a good 30 horsepower gain over stock and actually out at like 5500 RPM you'd see 50 horsepower over stock because the stock camshaft would be falling off so far. So uh, all in all I'd say that this this mild cam is going to be exactly what guys want with uh, 8.1, it's really going to be really good power down low, carries the torque really well, carries power out, and the nice thing is you can use it with factory springs and it's going to have a near, like, you know, kind of a stockish idle quality, so it'll work really good. So all in all, good camshaft. Thank you guys for showing up. Make sure to <laughs> like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.